Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Hello. If you're new to my channel, I usually do videos about traditional storytelling, Irish folklore, and occasionally about my fucked up eye. Casper refuses to let me do this without his involvement. This video isn't about any of those subjects though, it's not even about Casper, despite what Casper himself might think about it. This is a video response to one of Ginny D's roleplay videos. This one, the character's name was Clover Honeytongue, a halfling bard. The, the effort Ginny put in to making sure every one of those lines rhymed was incredible, by the way. But, um, last time I did one of these, uh, it was with Nakrasha the prison guard, and I decided to play Ash again because there was no way I could play a character who was supposed to be in prison and it not be Ash Jones. Um, but I'm glad I did because it meant that I got to put off this character for this video. And, and, and the questions being posed by Clover and the, 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 the theme of those questions is just Perfect. Absolutely perfect for this character. The character's name is Kroher Din Uana, and they are a Drake Blooded. Uh, Drake Blooded are a race in Five Oaths LARP, which is a LARP happening here in Ireland. I was going to be playing Kroher for the first time last year. But we all know why that didn't happen. So this is technically my first time ever playing this character. <laughs> and for once, for once, doing one of these, my character is actually genre appropriate. So, so ho hopefully that'll work. Let's go take a look. I was hoping you'd come by. Good sir, drinks for my friend and I. Hmm. Alas, I am a little short. A halfling joke I've heard a lot. Might you be a kindly sort and pay for these, since I cannot. Get her something to eat as well. <sighs> Poetry, the food of love, words both fair and true. Tell me, friend, do you enjoy hearing a verse or two? I prefer to read them. Well, all have heard of your recent success in epic tales, but me, I hope to go deeper, learn some new details. I hope to share your life in full, from start to current day. The inside scoop, a true tell-all. So, what do you say? <laughs> oh, where were you 50 years ago when I would have wanted that? Let's start at the dawn of your life. You were a babe in arms. Your parents, were they kind to you, or did they do you harm? Sweet living parents make for poor ballads, it's sad to say. If they were good, perhaps they died in some cruel, tragic way? My parents were fine. They raised me an idealist. That's tragedy enough. Yes, I see. Understand, I simply do my best to write compelling openings. Please don't be distressed. When you were young, 
Did others tease you, bully you, poor dear? Or were you much beloved, or source of other children's fear? I came from a wealthy and influential family. This earned me both sycophantic fawning and jealous resentment in equal measure. Now, many heroes of the past had destinies, it's said, born beneath a prophecy or curse upon their head. At first, did you believe that you were meant for greater stuff? Some auspicious dream or even wish would be enough? <laughs> I was the eldest child of a noble house. What do you Hmm, I can work with that. Let's jump a bit ahead. Uh, how long was it before you left your home and childhood bed? The exact moment I came of age and not a second after it. When you went, how did you feel? Joy or some malaise? Did you hightail it out of there? Reflect with wistful gaze? I felt like a legendary hero embarking on a quest to restore my family's lost honor. <laughs> because that's what I thought I was doing. And I looked back, only to make sure that others were watching me. Now is the part in any tale where you'd have learned your trade. You must have had some teacher, trainer, some to give you aid. If not, please dig. Your victories were fated. Every hero has a mentor, even if exaggerated. The bosun on my first ship. He was an older sailor, much older. He'd been a cabin boy on the fan. Most people have heard of that ship and its heroic crew. He was the only survivor, of course. He taught me sense, above all. What would you call the greatest lesson learned during this time? What skill or understanding would you take into your prime? The bosun, he'd often sing a song about his time on the Fang, one he'd written himself. It was about how hard himself and his crewmates had fought for honour and for glory. And how in the end his reward was a ship full of dead friends and his own castration. Oh, and a wooden medal. He, he did get that as well when he returned home. <laughs> the most important thing I learned that honor and glory, they're just words, hollow, meaningless. They're not things to fight for. And when you now reflect, how do you feel about that stage? Do memories warm your heart, or do they fill you up with rage? Some youths, you know, will look to ballads as they plan what's next. Should we then encourage them to follow in your steps? I feel that the younger people are when they learn these lessons, the less time they waste, the less likely they are to destroy themselves for nothing. But it's hard teaching these lessons to the young. It was hard for me to learn them at that age. But I learned them in the end. When did violence start to rear its head? Struggle and strife. Tell me, what's the first fight that you won in your whole life? After so many years, they all start to run together. It was short. I remember that. Nature has a balance, so each win must have a cost. Tell me also of the first battle you ever lost. Oh, well, that fight was even shorter. Now, I must describe you, how your features are designed, so listeners can picture our bold hero in their mind. Great poets can bring imagery to bear with every line. 
describing you will surely help my skills in this field shine. What color would you call your eyes? For then I could compare their lucid depths to molten honey, spring leaves, or stoneware. Brown. How would you describe your build? A rippling muscled mass? Shapely curves or towering high? A slender blade of grass? We needn't worry quite so much about accuracy. The goal is just to make you sound like quite a sight to see. Fairly average for a drake blooded of my age. Now, say a fan who loves my work should happen into you. Might you have a catchphrase or a banner they might view? How could they recognize you if they stumbled across your path? So they could have a portrait made or get an autograph? I am a one-eyed drake-blooded with turquoise scales. You should really prepare yourself for fame to come your way. My ballads, well, they top the charts. At least, they will someday. I hear you've lately had a victory of great renown, but every bard will sing of that. I will dig further down. Please think of some past venture that will never leave your mind, that's shaped you, that your memory just cannot leave behind. Victory or tragedy, yes, either will suffice. Winning's good, but it's dramatic if you pay a price. Set the scene. What triggered this adventure at the start? Seeking revenge, some artifact? Mm. What made you first take part? The adventure that sticks the most in my mind. When we found an uncharted island in very well-known seas. We'd been out of port for about three months. We came upon this island. As I said, these waters were very well known. It was very unexpected to find an unknown island that wasn't on our map. And we had a duty to chart undiscovered islands, but we went to, some of us went ashore for that, but we were also low on supplies. So a group of us went ashore to map out the island and to gather in food and above all else fresh water. We found everything we wanted. Let's say that now I've learned the lesson. If I'm in a strange land that I don't know, I boil the water before I drink it. Myself and the rest of the foraging party, within a half hour of drinking the water we found on the island, we shat ourselves magnificently. Not even solid. It was more of a liquid brown. It stank horrendously. I'll never be able to let go of that memory, no matter how hard I try. Now it's time to introduce the villain of the tale. Who stood between your party and your goal, hoping you'd fail? You mean, aside from dysentery and my own delusions of grandeur? He... I think it was the first mate in my third or maybe my fourth ship. He wasn't driven by the urge for honor or glory like I used to be. But he was very different to the captain as well. He wasn't motivated by duty or love of his nation. No. This man only had an eye for his own profit. He was a mutineer. He took the ship. I and a few of the others, we tried to stop him. What could we do? And why did they oppose you? What did your foe have to gain? Could they be sympathetic, or do they want to cause pain? <laughs> A 
wasn't so much what he had to gain as what he had to lose. The man was a fool. He had been boasting to members of a rival government of his great ship. The ship of which he claimed to be captain. They had offered him a letter of mark. Of course, he didn't have a ship of his own. And so he tried to claim ours from the captain so that he could make good on his promises. Now, how did your opponent look? The visuals are something many poets overlook. I hope they had some facial hair. A villainous goatee? Perhaps all right they had one. It makes them sound beastly. I don't know. One of the pale humans. Visuals aren't as important for my kind. He smelt foul. Absolutely foul. I'll share with you a secret. Known to writers truly skilled. There must be stakes. Your reader has to think you might be killed. What weakness do you have that might have caused you to be beat? What could have ruined everything and brought on your defeat? At the time, fighting him. <laughs> Essentially, I was a teenager with a handful of people at my side and he was a full-grown man with half the crew. Now, I have a bit of a blind spot. Now, for the final moments, the dramatic ending scene, I must invoke your senses, what was felt and heard and seen. What can you still remember from the moments at the end? The scent of smoke? The dying wheeze of one you once called friend? I remember screaming about treachery, being clapped in irons, and thrown into a wooden cell. Ooh, I really think this poem's headed for acclaim. Soon every hall and tavern will be ringing with my name. I mean, your name. Now, it needs a title. Something noble. Something grand. Do you have a better name? Something not quite so bland? Some call me Clover Honeytongue. Not many, but still, some. By what such name would you be known if you had such a one? <laughs> oh, I came up with many when I was younger. None of them stuck, of course, which is just as well because they were all terrible. You can come up with something better yourself, I'm sure. But if you want to really impress me, or spell my name correctly. Croher, C-O-N-C-H-O-B-H-A-R. Den, D-E-N, Uena, U-A-I-N-E. And make sure you describe the pronunciation as well. If someone comes up to me and calls me Konkabar, I will find you and I will gut you. Right, yeah, so that was Croher. And you can probably see why I thought Clover was a perfect foil for Croher because, ooh, <laughs> Croher is entirely themed around the idea of heroism and glory being nonsense. Ah, just, just perfect theming. Wonderful. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Okay, bye. Yellow poop. <laughs> there. All done. Yep. <laughs>